Today's episode of Variant is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Variant, I give you the history of Constantine. Welcome to Variant. We love comics more than I love Junior's Cheesecake from Times Square. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. The Constantine TV series premiered a few weeks back on NBC, so there's no better time for me to give you his history than right now. Not to mention, I'm a fan of Constantine anyways, and he's on one of my favorite comic book teams, Justice League Dark. So let's learn a little bit more about this occult detective. John Constantine first appeared as a cameo in the Saga of Swamp Thing issue 25 in June of 1984 in the storyline American Gothic. He revealed himself completely in the Saga of Swamp Thing issue 37 in June of 1985 and was created by the awesome Alan Moore, Steve Pissett, and John Totalben. Moore wanted to create a mystical character with a working class background. Constantine serves as the lead character of the comic books Hellblazer and of course his own self-titled comic. For those of you who don't know much about John Constantine, here's a brief rundown. He's also known as Hellblazer. Blazer and is a working class magician, a cult detective, and a great con man. He is well known for his fierce wit, endless cynicism, and his constant chain smoking. He's basically a dishonest counterculture anti hero. Constantine is also a humanist driven by his heartfelt desire to defend mankind from the forces of evil. Essentially, he's a good guy, but really rough around the edges. Constantine's backstory can be mostly attributed to the writer Jamie Delano, who was the first to write about Constantine in a real world environment with the Hellblazer title. What's a nice little fun fact is that the pop singer Sting was used as visual inspiration for Constantine's early look, which I have to say, once looking at the two side by side and realizing they're both English, it's quite obvious. And staying on the topic of fun facts, the Hellblazer series was the longest running and most successful title for DC Comics Vertical Imprint. So now you know, and knowing's what? Half the battle. Speaking of knowing, it's now time to know about his comic book origin. John was born in Liverpool. He spent most of his life growing up in London from the 60s onward. He was born as a twin, which he happened to strangle in the womb. His mother died in labor, and his father blamed John for the death of his mother, and that was the root of the friction between them. And it also explains the root for all his other issues. When not spending time running away from home, Constantine was raised by his older sister, Cheryl Masters, known as the Constant One. John is a descendant from a long line of magic and mystical users. Fascinated by the occult, from a young age, John threw himself into learning magic to escape the unhappy family life. He eventually moved in with his roommate Chas Chandler and the two became best friends. Around this time, John began following occult circles around London as well as the punk music scene, because why not? Long story short, he eventually became the magic using, demon tricking con artist he is today. Constantine is a chain smoker as I mentioned earlier and has been since the character's introduction. His brand of choice is silk cut, but he has been seen smoking Marlboro or Camels from time to time, presumably when he's out out of country or when silk cut are unavailable. Now, I'm not quite sure how interested you guys were in his smoking habits and preferences, but I figured I'd mention it anyway, so do what you wish with that little bit of info. Despite loving his cigarettes, Constantine does not take or like other drugs. He once called his friend a dirty lowlife bastard when he found a needle with drugs in it. As for Constantine in the New 52, he's one of the main characters in the awesome Justice League Dark title. Justice League Dark is a team of supernatural heroes like Dead Man, Frankenstein, Swamp Thing, and so on, which is led by the star of today's show, John Constantine. So if you guys are looking for a great team book or just want a darker supernatural read, this is definitely a great choice. Plus, Frankenstein has a huge freaking sword and he uses it to cut up all sorts of monsters and creatures. If that doesn't sound awesome to you, you need to seek some help. The New 52 also slightly altered Constantine's history, such as meeting Satana in New York instead of San Francisco, and the origins of how he got his trademark trench coat. During the gap where he travels the world to learn magic, the New 52 added the history of him meeting Nick Necro, who was implied to be John's mentor and the original owner of John's trademark trench coat. John stole it from him, well let's just say Nick was down for the count, which is another fun fact. I'm just full of fun facts today. In Constantine issue 14 of the New 52, it was revealed that John Constantine as a kid was taught and cast his first magical spell at the cost of the lives of his parents and his house burning down. It was implied that his mother, unlike in the Hellblazer, survived the childbirth. It was also revealed that he spent his childhood in the 80s in Liverpool, England. However, it is not shown if he had any siblings, like Cheryl in Hellblazer. We find out the one who taught John his first spell was Tanarok from Cold of the Cold Flames who becomes one of John's enemies. As for Constantine's love interest, the most notable one I would say is Zatanna. The Forever Evil Blight storyline would establish that John, Zatanna, and Nick Necro were all involved in a magical pact and love triangle, which fell apart due to Zatanna 
ending her relationship with Nick to pursue John. Nick refers to John as having been his lover as well, stating, we were all in love and you two shut me out. Which brings me to my next bit of info. Constantine is bisexual. He was originally revealed to be bisexual by a guest writer's mention of John Constantine having the occasional boyfriend with the writer Brian Azzarello, later adding to this concept by having him be in a sexual relationship with another man. Now, as I always like to do with my history of episodes, I'm going to list a handful of villains just so you can know some of Constantine's enemies. You have First of the Fallen, who's a devil-like character, Nergal, a powerful demon and arch enemy of John's, Julian, who's one of the many mystics Constantine has come across over the years, and a newer villain, Blight, who's a combination of all of humanity's evils. Now, as I tend to say on my history of episodes from time to time, there is no way I can mention every single detail, storyline, reboot, etc. about the character I'm talking about, but everything I did mention about Mr. Constantine is the basis of what you need to know about him. So don't get mad and say, you forgot this or you didn't mention this. I just can't mention everything. But now it's time for some reading recommendations since I may have perked your interest with the character. You have Hellblazer Haunted, Hellblazer Ashes and Dust in the City of Angels, Hellblazer Dangerous Habits, Just League Dark Volume 1, and if you want to catch up with more current stuff, Constantine Volume 1, The Spark and the Flame. Those are just a few to get you started. When you buy a domain name from Domain.com, you get the power to influence and control what people find when they search for you online. No domain extension will help you tell your story like a .com or .net domain name. Domain.com is affordable, reliable, and easy to use. The guys at Domain.com gave Variant an awesome offer. Get 15% off Domain.com's already affordable domain names and web hosting when you use the coupon code Variant at checkout. So when you think domain names, think Domain.com. First up for Wednesday, November 12th, we have all new Captain America issue 1. Putting it plain and simple, the adventures of Sam Wilson, aka Falcon as Captain America, starts here. Next is Captain America in the Mighty Avengers issue 1. Yet again, this is a brand new series that will spotlight Sam Wilson as Captain America as well as his fellow Avengers. Here we have Batgirl issue 36. This is the second issue with an all new look and creative team. The series definitely has a more poppy vibe thus far, but I'm curious to see where it's headed. Now we have Batman issue 36. It's no secret this is my current favorite title being released every month. And this issue is part two of the new Endgame storyline. The only thing I should have to say is that last issue, Batman had to fight the entire Justice League. And finally, we have Constantine issue 19. How topical. The danger of Constantine's journey to Earth 2 is increasing by the second. Well, that brings another episode of Variant to a close. As always, you can like our Variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic book related. But again, I want to remind you guys once more, since this is only the second week of me doing this, that every Friday between 12 and 5 p.m. Central Time, I'll be asking a question on my Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter right here if you're not already doing so. And once you see me ask the question on my Twitter, just send me a 10 second video response with your answer. Then email your video to variant at triunefilms.com and I will pick a handful of your video answers to show at the end of every week's episode. I've also included all the directions in the description below, as well as all the links. As for the question I asked this past Friday, it was, what is your favorite comic book TV show? Gotham, Arrow, Flash, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., or Constantine? So let's see what you guys like most. And I'll see you guys next week when I talk about all things comics. My favorite comic TV show is The Flash. Even though I like Marvel better, I think DC knows what they're doing with their TV shows. I think Arrow is the best. It really captures how cool Green Arrow can be. My favorite comic book TV show is because he's amazing and very fast. Hey Eris, I think my favorite comic book based TV show would be Constantine and The Walking Dead. Best comic book made into a TV show or a series? I would have to pick Gotham. It's just been telling great stories and moving very nicely. Hey Eris, my favorite comic book based TV show is Smallville actually. To me it's kind of like training for Superman before he's actually Superman. Hey what's up Eris, uh, my favorite comic book show is probably Constantine. I just really like the character. Andrew Ryan, you have failed this city.